can only watch as our satellite program goes Kaputnik. And now it's Luna 2. Luna 2 hits the moon. It's the moon and Soviet medallions scatter the lunar surface. A month later, and the Soviets are back when Luna 3 takes the first picture ever of the far side of the moon. The Americans fight valiantly to stay in the race, but it's a Russian who will be the first to write his name in space. The Soviets send a second man into orbit. America's response? A chimpanzee named Enos. <laughs> oh, at last, at last, an American orbits the Earth. Well done, John Glenn. But the Soviets, they won't win. Two Russians circle the Earth in twin orbits. I believe that this nation should commit itself before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and turning his station to the Earth. And the Russians come back with another person, the first woman in space. Now it's a battle of giant rockets, and America overtakes the Russians with their Saturn One rocket. But the Soviets quickly take back the lead. The first to walk in space. The Americans are once again in second place. All that's left now is the moon as both sides battle it out for space supremacy. And if this generation does not intend to power in the backbone of the coming age of space, we need to be a part of it. We need to lead it. America is finally taking the lead. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, what we are willing to postpone, and what we intend to win. The crew of Apollo 1, Command Pilot Virgil Grissom, Senior Pilot Edward White, and Pilot Roger Chappie were killed when a flash fire swept their spacecraft while they were going through one of those routine tests. No one ever thought that getting to the moon would not be dangerous, that space exploration would not be risky and difficult. Now, suddenly, with the deaths of three astronauts, the perspective is not quite the same. And remember your essay after the tragedy of the Apollo 1 fire. Would you ever attempt a manned mission again? Is the risk of human life too high? Ben, Ben, you have to see this. What's wrong? There's a message for you. They called the school three times. They really want to speak with you as soon as possible. Who called? You should have seen Mrs. Marco's face when she handed me this message and asked when we're moving to Houston. What? Move where? Is this a joke? I don't think so. But I applied for the program over a year ago. Well, the timing of this is... I mean, after the Apollo 1 fire, if there's another accident, God forbid, the whole space program could collapse. I don't even have the job yet. Maybe I should call first. Right. Well, of course. I'm jumping things here. Okay. But if NASA does make an offer, let's both call in sick for a few days and go figure this out. I've got to give a test tomorrow. I can't. We... We'll have plenty of time to discuss this at home. If they do make an offer, if they do, then there's somewhere we both need to go before we decide. You're crazy, Ben. We can't drive all the way to Houston. Besides, I don't think our old trip can even make that trip. Oh, we won't take the car. And we're not going to Houston.
It's incredible. It feels like we're in some science fiction movie. 363 feet, six and a half million pounds, <laughs> over three times higher and 19 times heavier than the Gemini rockets. Oh. And none of its three stages have ever been tested before, at least not in flight. Isn't that the whole point of this mission? Yeah, they're really going for broke. It's pretty risky. Maybe they should wait to move on until all three stages are fully tested and ready. Well, I'm sure glad that you're not running NASA. It'll take us 50 years to get to the moon. About as long as it's taken us to make this decision. Are you really ready for the chaos? The total upheaval to our lives? I don't feel that we've got- What? We haven't tested every stage of this enough? Okay, so what's stage one? My teaching job? They have schools in Houston. That's not fair. You have a job waiting there, I don't. Okay, you're right. Both our jobs are stage one, our biggest risk. And let's not forget, what if I can't handle the job and get fired? Ben, are you really worried about that? This guy, who will be my supervisor, he tried to explain how I'll be working to support flight dynamics and mission control, but to tell you the truth, I don't really understand what the job's actually going to be. What if I fail again? That won't happen, Ben. All right. So, now we need to consider stage two, starting a family. Well, I believe we can make babies in Houston. I mean, I'm happy to try. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Stage three? What about, there are so many unknowns and things are finally going well for us now. Do you really want to toss our lives out the window and move there right before Thanksgiving? Yes. Okay, so what if we do go? Let's go! No! No, 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 not yet. So we, we get there. But then what do you do? What do I do? You'll teach. You'll tutor. We'll find a way for you to teach somewhere. But I need to do this, Elizabeth. It's like a second chance. Washing out of flight school was the worst experience of my life. Yes. But if you had become a pilot, we would have never met. Okay, never meeting you. That would be the worst experience of my life. Well, and then there's still the final stage. The capsule at the top of our rocket to test. Oh, really? Yes, and it's the most important stage. How do you think I'll look in cowboy boots? Thanks for rock. 